In exercise 3.9, we explore the implications of a constant force of mortality on certain probabilities about the fractional part of the future lifetime. Starting with what is given in part A, we have to show a certain conditional probability, namely this one, about Rx, where Rx, as stated, is the fractional part of your future lifetime. So what does that mean? Let's right dive right into it. So we will need it actually in solving part A. So so what do we need to do? We have to we have some prob conditional probability involving this fractional part, the integer part kx, and it's we have to show that it equals this expression on the right hand side. Now, let us. So what what is this mu star x plus k? It is actually given. It says that it's equal to minus log of the survival probability of somebody aged x plus k. Now, we know of a for certain formula that relates the survival probability with this, with this uh, force of mortality. And that is that the probability of surviving one year for somebody aged x plus k where x is some integer and k is 0, 1, 2, 3, so also an integer, then this is equal to e to the power minus the integral of 0, 1, and then the force of mortality, which is in this case constant, ds. Well, since it's constant, this just, we can take this constant out of the integral, so this is minus mu x plus k star, and then integrate 0 to 1 ds. But of course, integrating 0 to 1 is just 1. So this gives us e to the minus mu x plus k star. All right, so apparently the survival probability is just e to the power minus the force of mortality, if it's constant. Now, what do we need to prove, right? Let's, let's start with this conditional probability and see where we end up. So when it's done, this is probability of Rx is only equal to S, conditional on Kx being equal to K. Now we we can use uh, what we have learned from probability theory to rewrite this conditional probability as um, a fraction of probabilities. And this gives us that we have these both events being true divided by probability that kx is k is true. So in, in, in this part, we we use this formula, right? So this is probability of a condition on b is equal to the probability of a and b divided by the probability of b. Okay. Then we proceed by uh, rewriting this in terms of the future lifetime of tx. So how do we do that? We know that um, we know that tx, so let me write that in blue again. We know that tx is equal to kx plus rx. Why? Because kx is the integer part and rx is the fractional part. Therefore, we can write this upper probability as, um, I'll do this in one step, so Rx is equal to Tx minus Kx, and Kx is equal to K, so we can rewrite this as follows. We also know that Kx is the integer part of Tx, so let me write that here. So we know Kx is equal to the integer part of tx. And if we are looking at the event where kx equals k, that means tx has to be at least k. Right? So it's strictly larger than k. And similarly on the in the denominator, uh, we have oh, I flipped it, but still the same probability. Uh, tx has to be larger than k. Alright, so now let me finish that thought bubble. And Let's compute these probabilities. Let me make some room here. 
Now, how do we compute this? Well, we have actually seen these computations on page, uh, page 32 on how to compute this. And it is the following. I'll leave this for you to, to check. So we have to, we are aged X and we have to survive at least two age. We have to survive age, uh, we have to survive K years up to age X plus K. And then we have to die within the, yeah, once we are aged X plus K, we have to die within S years, right? So that's the uh, numerator. Now for the denominator, it's, it's similar. We, we are aged X and we survive K years. And then we have to die within one year. So X plus K, Q X plus K. Now it's clear that this term cancels. And what we are left with is these, uh, survival, the, these uh, probabilities of death. And we can rewrite this by definition in terms of 1 minus the survival probability in the numerator and the denominator. And then we know from the from what we computed before uh, from here that this simply equals e to the power minus uh, s times mu x plus k star divided by 1 minus e to the power x plus k star and that finishes part a yes in order to Okay, so let's now look at part B. I will remove all of this. For part B, we need to show that if... Basically work the other way around. That if equation 3.17 holds, then the force of mortality is constant. So how do we do that? Now, we can, we can simply start from... Uh, start from equation 3.17 because we have to assume that this is true okay so starting starting from equation 3.17 we let's see where we end up so we have that this holds times s divided by 1 minus e to the power mu x plus k star all right now okay but by definition this equals the uh, left hand side of 3.17 right this we showed earlier in part a that it equals the fraction of so, tx being between these two values and then the, in the denom numerator and in the denominator it was between k and k plus one right okay and then again by uh uh, the computations on page 32 we know that this equals this uh, kpx times um, sqx plus k divided by kpx times qx plus k all right and, th and then we know that this cancels and what are we and what, what are we left with well this is the probability that this is 1 minus s p x plus k and for and the bottom one is well we know that this equals mu x plus k star right for integer ages we know that this denominator holds so what do we see in the numerators if we compare these is that these two must be equal because the denominators are equal right uh, so why do we know the denominators are equal actually? It's because of this assumption right here. So this is still assumed. Now, um, what do we know now? Well, okay, so we know that, we know that, um, oh, I want black pen, yes. So we know, uh, so we can conclude that SPX plus K has to equal e to the power minus mu star x plus k times s okay perfect are we done now well not precisely 
because we still have to show that the force of mortality itself is actually constant in between integer ages. What do we need to show? Well, we need to show that the general force of mortality, let's say mu x plus k, yeah, um, plus s with s s in between so s is smaller be greater than zero and smaller than one is constant on so on this interval of um, x plus k and x plus k plus one right and how we do that is by using the general formula we know from equation 2.17, so it's a chapter in, uh, it's an equation in chapter 2, which relates the force of mortality with the survival probabilities, that mu x plus k plus s is equal to minus the derivative to s of the log of the survival probability. Now, we know that the survival probability is given by this e power, right? We derived it just now. And if we plug that in, we get the following. Minus x plus k star times s, right? And now this log cancels against the exponent, so the e power. And these minuses in front and in the exponent cancel as well. So we get ds of mu x plus k star s which is of course mu x plus k star therefore we have shown that the force of mortality on any interval uh, x plus k up to x plus k plus 1 because s is between 0, zero and 1 is apparently equal to this constant thus we can actually conclude that the force of mortality is constant if you assume this in this uh, equation 3.17 and that proves part d